this constant vilification of men. I mean, seriously, enough, enough with making all men seem collectively guilty for the rapes and murders and wife bashings of a tiny few. Enough of making all men seem barely civilised monsters needing training not to do what the vast majority of us, in fact, never would. We live in a society where we teach women not to get raped, where we should be teaching men not to rape. Can I point out how unfair that kind of rhetoric is and how much we hear of that? When children are killed by their parents, half the time it's by their mother. But we don't say, therefore, women kill their children. We don't say, let's now teach women not to kill their children. No, we don't smear the vast majority with the sins of a few. We say instead, some women, a tiny few, are child killers. They are not the typical woman, but the aberration. But you would never guess from some of the fashionable hate speech now against men that the same mercy applies to them. Now, here's just one example. I could cite so many more. An example which is a supposed bit of comedy from six women paid by the ABC, a national broadcaster, to whack men. Now, it started like this, treating a courtesy to women as an insult. Thanks, men, for holding the door open for me. Otherwise, I'd just stand outside in the rain for hours. Now, actually, holding the door open for a woman is an insult. It's not an insult. It's actually exactly the kind of cultural signal to men that even a feminist should welcome because it is a ritual act of humility to acknowledge that men, being generally stronger, do have a special responsibility to use that strength to protect those physically weaker, even to defer to them. But those ABC women hadn't finished attacking this argument that most men do actually protect women. Thanks, men, for not listening to us when we say no. You know I'm not strong enough to know what I want to fight you off. Thanks to all the men out there for so many domestic violence calls. It keeps me in a job. Thanks, Thanks for, for protecting, protecting us, us from, from men. 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 How strange, I thought, watching this video. I mean, is there really nothing good to say about men? You see, if a woman needs police to save her from a hold-up or a siege, odds are it will be a man who risks death for her. If a woman needs saving from a burning building, odds are it will be a man who puts his life on the line to defy the flames. If a woman needs saving from drowning, odds are that it will be a man who paddles through the waves to her. If a woman needs her children snatched from extreme danger, odds are it will be a man who volunteers to save them and even dies in the attempt. Now, true, many men do have a restless ambition and a will to power, some even an ingenuity, and from some that has produced evil. Yet, if a woman needs penicillin, to save her life. It is a man she should thank for discovering it. If a woman must drive somewhere, it's a man she should thank for inventing the first affordable a car. And on it goes. If a woman turns on the lights, it's a man she should thank for taming electricity. If a woman loves books, it's a man she should thank for the printing press. Well, of course, men don't expect or demand such thanks, of course. Nor do men usually complain about generally dying earlier or working longer or paying more tax. And we certainly don't make films denouncing all women in turn as 
needy or ungrateful, that would be unfair. And that would be sexist. Besides, some of us still believe that that kind of whinging is what can only be excused when it comes from weaker people. Some of us have still got to stand strong, okay? While those others, they glory in their victimhood, lovingly count their wounds, complain and blame. Sure, some of us men may now and then sigh, but in the end, it is still in the nature of most men to protect and to serve. And that's one big tick for men.